the golf course behind us there, all the way through to the beautiful Connemara Mountains here in front of us on the right. That's all the northern shore. And in fact, this is the only place from which you can see the entire original Ashford estate. That's measured from the golf course behind us out to the start of the farmland or the mountains here. So all of that woodland, that was the extent of the original Guinness estate. So they had uh, 1,500 acres of woodland uh, on the lake shore. They had 1,500 acres of farmland running at the back of the trees, and they always had 350 acres around the, particular, uh, around the castle itself. So the length of the lake then sweeps way off to your left as you face forward, all the way down to Galway City, uh, 40 miles of water down in that way. And at Galway City, this fresh water, Galway City is now behind us, so at Galway City, there's a big river in Galway City called the Corrib River, the same name as this lake. That's taking this water out to the Atlantic Ocean, out through Galway City. So we are 27 feet above the Atlantic Ocean here. So that's why you never get salt water in here. This is all fresh, clean water. You can drink the water straight from this lake. And you may have noticed by looking around, you don't see any houses down close to the water here. And that's why no accident. Since 1969, they haven't allowed it. You haven't been allowed to build a house on the shore of the lake, down close to the water, I mean. Nor have you been allowed to build a house on any of these beautiful islands. Because this is our natural water reserve. And this is the way we want to keep it clean. So altogether, you have 377 islands, beautiful islands on the lake. 35 houses in total on all those islands put together. And they're all older houses that were passed down from one generation to the next. The deepest part of the lake is 152 feet, while you'd have an average depth of 30 to 40 feet. That's usually where the fishermen do best on the lake here. There's some beautiful fish in the lake, but it's famous for the wild brown trout. Just last May, a visiting fisherman from Wales, they broke the record for the heaviest brown trout, and his record was just shy of 25 pounds in weight. The biggest brown trout caught in Ireland in 120 years. But the fact that we spill into the ocean, we're not affected by the tide in the ocean because we're 27 feet above it, but it does allow wild Atlantic salmon to get into this system. From off the coast of Canada, they make an incredible journey. Twice a year they swim across, up through this system, and right into the village of Cong where they lay the lake. So the biggest salmon ever caught in the lake, 28 pounds. The biggest fish on the lake are the northern pike. And the nearest thing we've ever had to a monster on this lake was a 49 pound pike, which was caught back in 1962. And that was the same year, and indeed the only year ever, that this lake froze over solid completely. It was just a freak winter. There was a foot of ice on top, top of the entire lake. And all the farmers were shocked when they woke up one morning and found that all their sheep and their cattle and all their animals, they couldn't find them anywhere because they were actually out on the top of the ice here. They were walking out between the islands. You can imagine the chaos trying to sort those out uh, even when they did get them back. So while there are only 35 houses on all the islands put together, you have two of the bigger islands which are inhabited still to this day. So as you look over to your right, and I'm going to try and point to you here, facing forward, look to your right. So straight over there, you see where the trees are most visible. There's a long line of black trees there just off the mainland behind us. That's Finnish Macintyre. Fifteen families live on that full time today. And you have a causeway that leads into the mainland, so you can drive in and out. Then there's another island with man-made causeway by the way. Then you have another island further down the lake in Chiquino, 11 families. They also have a causeway. And then you just have eight other smaller islands with one or two homes on those. But it's say no house allowed to be built since 1969. Looking over to your left now for a minute, you see the green mountain here, that's Mount Gable. And up on top of Mount Gable, around the centre of it, you can see, if your right side is good, the three little mounds. The, the one on the right of the three is the bigger one. And now I want you to look out over the back of the boat. And you see up on top of that hill, the yellow hill, there's another big mound up there. See that? Out behind the boat here. Uh, and those are all prehistoric pagan passage to man-made structures. These structures are older than the pyramids of Egypt. They're three thousand they're uh, the date of three thousand BC, but they're actually five thousand years old. Now there's one island, a 
fault that stands out from all the rest on the lake here historically, the most famous of all the islands on the lake, is Inchubril Island. Just over here, I'm pointing to it here, if you're up here on the upper deck. But as you look back, look over to your left, that big long island over there, Inchubril Island. St. Patrick was banished to that island by the pagan ruins, and he built a church there. And that church still survived in the 5th century. And on the last Sunday of every June, as a tradition, all the people around this lake, and it is a big lake, we all get into our boat, and you see all the boats convening on each of the islands. And that's where we go to celebrate the annual mass. You know, five or six hundred people there every year for that very special day on the lake. So, if there's anything I'm leaving out, guys, you know, feel free to come and ask me uh, any information that you might want to know that I haven't covered. Well, let's say the temperature of the water, for instance, about 55 degrees Fahrenheit at the moment. It's been up to 68, 69 in the middle of the summer, so people will swim in the lake as well. Uh, one thing I would suggest to you, and I always make the suggestion of people who come back to thanks me for it, is when you're leaving this area, you should head west. What I mean is Ashford Castle is down in front of us, uh, Khan Village. You should be travelling through this woodland along the main road west, right back. When you get to the end of the woodland, the main road comes down onto the edge of the lake and it goes all the way along those mountains there. So that's a 12 mile drive. And at the end of that, you'll come to the village of Mam, M-A-A-S, Mam, in the valley there. And at that point, you can decide, are we going north or are we going south? So that doesn't affect your route wherever you happen to be going to. So that's a 12 mile drive. You can then say you've been to Connemara. That's Connemara back there. Beautiful, beautiful country. So, for example, let's say you're going to Galway City, Shannon Airport, or any of the southern counties, or indeed Dublin. Right? So what you do is you get into Con, you drive west along the 12 mile drive, right back to the end of the mountain. You come to the village of Man, you turn left. And then you're going to follow the contour of the lake all the way down to Galway City, Shannon Airport, the southern counties. On the other hand, if you're heading north, the fly goes to all the northern counties, west coast, all of that. When you get to land, you go straight through, and you go to Lena, Westport, Castlebar, Sligo, then you're heading north. So if you're going to the south or to Dublin, go to Man, to our left. If you're going to the northern counties, Man, to straight through. It's, it's, uh, it's a no-brainer, you just have to do it, it's a beautiful drive to take. It will add, we'll say, about, for example, maybe 25 or 30 minutes onto your route to Dublin, but that's nothing when you see what you want to enjoy. This is Ardalon Island here coming up on your right hand side, another famous island, because it was from this island that Arthur Guinness, the second generation of Guinness here, took his title. This Arthur Guinness was great grandson to the original Arthur, or the Hillon, two Gaelic words meaning high island. He took his title from here because he used to walk through this woodland and he used to stand on a viewing point in the woodland in front of it, which I'm going to point out to you in a minute. And he used to look out of the lake and he was looking straight out of the island. So he became Lord Cardinal, taking that name from the island there. I'm going to take you right down now in front of us. Again, you need good eyesight, but I will get you much, much closer. Down in front, you can see a yellow patch of rhododendrons there. Straight in front of us, you can see a stone monument and a log cabin directly ahead of us, halfway up in the trees. I'm going to get you right up close to that. Because that monument marks the spot. Looking out of the lake, looking out at our thought island. So don't worry, we're going to get you right up the island, and you'll be able to go to your left as we're passing and you'll see it out there. Again, we should be down in front of Ashford Castle within 10 minutes. I can take a quick run down on the history of Ashford again at that point, and then we're back and finish our trip.